Hi, my name is Shio Washido from Lindex Nikon. Thank you for purchasing one of our shrink feet units. Today I'll be going over how to set up, how to inspect, and a step-by-step -step on how to use our unit. Let's get to it. Now that you've ordered your shrink fit unit, you should have gotten a crate like this. This is a standard crate that we ship for all of our Stark IIs. These crates are custom built to hold the Stark II shrink fit unit and cooling tower. We recommend users hold onto the crate in case the unit needs to be shipped. Your shrink fit will not come with a plug. Please consult an electrician for the correct plug for your application. Let's review everything that was in your kit. Your start to shrink fit unit, cooling tower, instructions for both shrink fit unit and cooling tower. On the left side of your shrink fit tower, you have your taper pot rack. On your right side, you have your cooling rack. On the left side, you have two taper pots of your choice. On the right side, you have five heat induction rings. and five cooling brackets. You have your set of spring clips right here, your controller, heat resistant gloves, and that's your kit. Once you've assembled your product, inspect everything before you plug it in. First, check the plug. Make sure the plug is rated for 220 volt, three phase, and 30 amp. Next, check the heads for both the cooling unit and the heating unit. Use two hands to raise it and lower it to make sure that it doesn't snag. Next, check the heating head to make sure the 180 degree rotation is working properly. Last, you want to secure the cooling unit. The cooling unit has four holes at the bottom so you can secure it to a table so it doesn't shift during usage. Before we get into the step-by-step, -step, let's review what the controller does. There are four buttons on our pendant. First one is the mode button. The mode button, you click it and you can switch between auto and manual mode. We recommend most customers to stay on auto mode, but for those stubborn tools, you can use the manual mode to heat it more. Next is the cooling buttons. There's two buttons because the Start 2 unit is capable of holding two air cooling units. Only one is sold with the unit, but you can buy an additional one if you have high volume of shrink fit tools. And the middle button is a heating button. If you press this button, the shrink fit unit will start heating a tool. And it'll lock out when enough heat is applied. Let's do a walkthrough to review what we've learned so far in the video. We're gonna be using a start two with two cooling towers to shrink a CAF 50 holder and a CAF 40 holder. Let's begin. First, we're gonna start with the CAF 40 holder. We're gonna to have to select the 40 taper pot and put it into the heating machine, like so. Grab the CAF 40 holder, put it into the pot, and now, before you choose the heat induction ring, you have to make sure it's the right size. What you wanna do is you wanna put the pot over the cutting tool and see if the hole is too big or too small. If it's too big or too small, the heating won't occur properly, so you have to make sure you have the right size. Once you have the right size, you can put it into the heater and then rotate it clockwise to secure it. Once that is done, you want to use both hands to lower the heating head. Once the heating head is lowered, you want to grab the controller and the cutting tool. Insert the cutting tool into the heater, press the middle button in the controller to start heating. You'll see the orange light in the heater go off, and then once it turns red, it's locked out, indicating the heating process is complete. Now, before you touch anything heated, you wanna make sure you have heat resistant gloves. You wanna use both hands to raise the heating head before you touch the tool. Now let's move on to how the cooling process works. You want to grab the heat cooling tower, grab its head, raise it, grab the 40 taper tool with the heater, put it
put it into the pot of the cooling tower, grab the cooling bracket that's the corresponding size, put it in, rotate it clockwise to secure. Now you can use both hands to drop the cooling tower. Once that's done, you want to grab the controller again. We're going to use the right button for the right cooling tower to start the cooling process. When you hear that air hissing, it indicates that the cooling process started. Now, let's move on to the 50 taper holder. To start with the 50 taper holder, you want to remove the 40 taper pot that we use for the CAT40 tool. Grab the 50 taper pot. Put the tool in. And change the induction size based on the holder. So we're going to grab a pot here, check it against the shrink fit holder to make sure it's the right size. If it's the right size, take out the old induction ring, put in the new one, rotate it to secure it. Now you're ready to shrink. Make sure you use two hands to lower the heating head. Once the heating head is lowered, grab the controller and your cutting tool. Feed the cutting tool down, hit the heating button in the middle again, and the heating starts. And it locks out, so now the heating process is complete. Again, please wear heat resistant gloves before you proceed. Use two hands to raise the head. Once the head is raised, you can start to the cooling tower again. Raise the head of the cooling tower, grab the holder like so. Put it into the pot, lower it, but before you finish lowering again, make sure you have the cooling bracket with the corresponding size with the induction ring. Put the cooling bracket in, turn it clockwise to secure it, lower the head, and for the left, you want to hit the left cooling button. So now the process is done. Now we will be going over how to remove a tool from a shrink fit tool. First, make sure you select the correct pot for the tool. In this case, we will be using a CAT50 pot. Place it into the heater, and then place the tool into the pot. You will want to use the same heat induction ring you use for the shrinking process. Grab the heat induction ring, put it into the heater, turn clockwise to secure. Now that you've done that, you may lower the head by using two hands. Once that is completed, grab the controller and hit the heat button. While it is heating, grab onto the tool and slightly pull out. Now you've removed the tool from the shrink fit tool. To remove a broken tool, you can use the steps we mentioned previously on how to remove a tool. If the tool is too short, you can use this other method that we are going to show you right now. First, you want to turn the induction head 180 degrees counterclockwise. Next, you want to put the tool holder in here. Before you start shrinking, make sure you have a cloth that can cover where the pot would be going. Next, you grab the controller and press the heat button. And there you go. Broken tool, just like that.